Shortly after OpenAI's announcement of their video generation tool Sora being available, Google has come out with their own announcement releasing VO2, their latest state-of-the-art video generational tool. But how does Sora compare to it? Let's find out. Hey, it's Nathaniel, and today I'm going to be exploring how Sora stacks up against Google's latest invention. VO2 is Google's next iteration of their own video generation tool. The first version of VO was first announced back at Google I.O. in May and has quickly come out with their second generation claiming state-of-the-art video generation capabilities that, according to Google, are more preferred than its competitors. VO comes from Google's DeepMind team, which I actually learned about from their documentary they did on AlphaGo, an artificial intelligence system. Much like IBM's Deep Blue computer that was designed to play chess, AlphaGo was designed to play Go a board game played with black and white tiles that are placed on a 19 by 19 grid line board. Considered one of the most difficult games to master, the aim of this game is to capture as much of the territory as possible. The DeepMind team were able to train their AI on how to play the game from scratch and defeat the greatest Go players. It's a fascinating documentary which you can watch for free on YouTube. The link is in the description down below if you want to check it out. Then they went on to develop more AI systems, including AlphaStar, the first AI system to defeat a top professional player at StarCraft II, considered to be one of the most challenging real-time strategy games. WaveNet, a realistic text-to-speech model. AlphaFold, an AI system that accurately predicts 3D models of protein structures, and many others. Suffice to say that they're pretty good at building AI systems, which leads us to them creating VO2. According to Google, VO2 brings an improved understanding of real-world physics and nuances of human movement and expression, which helps improve its ability to provide a more true realism in its video generation. It has the ability to understand specific cinematic language, such as low-angle tracking shot, give me a shallow depth of field, or use an 18mm lens, and it will understand what you're asking for and be able to craft that style of shot. VO2 can also create videos up to 4K resolution and up to two minutes in length, which is four times better resolution and up to six times longer videos compared to Sora. Although currently in video FX where you can use VO2, it's capped at 720p and eight second clips for the time being. They also say that VO2 should be able to hallucinate less with regards to extra lips, much unlike this gymnast video created by Sora. Now, Google has mentioned up front that there are limitations still, with any shots that have complex scenes or complex motion remaining a challenge still, which is also the same problem that Sora has as well. So unfortunately, I'm on the waiting list to VO2 and video effects because I don't live in the US. So unfortunately, I can't do an exact head-to-head -head comparison, but I can do the next best thing. What I'm going to do is take the prompts that Google has provided for the best videos that they've created and run them through Sora to see how well Sora can do with the same prompts. I was also able to find some videos people have created with VO2 on X, and I'll use the same prompts within Sora to see how they come out. Now, I thought it would be funny just to have a look and see what Google Gemini and OpenAI's ChatGPT think of VO2 and Sora and how they compare against each other. So on screen right now, on the left is Gemini and on the right is ChatGPT 4.0. The first question that I asked was, what can you tell me about Google's VO2? And so obviously Gemini has done a very good job of promoting how Google's VO2 is cutting edge. It's very powerful. It's very high resolution, provides that enhanced realism and fidelity and advanced motion capabilities. ChatGPT has also picked up on those things as well. So that's quite nice that they have nice things to say for both sides. With Google's version, they've gone a little bit more in depth in how it, it benefits content creators, pointing out things like bringing ideas to life, enhancing the storytelling, increasing the efficiency, so on and so forth. The next question I asked was, how does it compare to OpenAI Sora? And Google does a decent job of backing itself, its own products. ChatGPT does break it out into separate sections and tries to say which one has the advantage. Objectively, which is quite nice, it does tend to pick VO2 as the better platform for video generation. However, at 
the very end, there's a nice summary on both sides. ChatGPT does present it in just a really nice way. You can see it in a nice table and how they compare against each other. What's interesting is that ChatGPT obviously gives its flowers to VO2, saying it has an edge in resolution, video length, and the user controls, making it more suitable for creators focused on that high-end cinematic content. But it also says that Sora excels at that scene consistency and generates these highly polished shorter clips. So it's an interesting way to back itself in that sense. Google Gemini, on the other hand, also mentions similar things as well, but it does give points to Sora for having wider accessibility and the rapid pace of just AI development is gonna make it a much stronger competitor very quickly as well. So this prompt is right off Google VO's 2's website and it talks about how there's a cinematic shot of a female doctor in a yellow hazmat suit. Now, how well has ChatGPT done? And I gave it two chances to create a video in that regard. And I think it's done fairly well. The first video you can see here, it's got the yellow hazmat suit, it's got the, the eyes down, it's got the panning quite well as well. There's a little bit of strangeness in what she's holding in her hand, but I think that's perfectly fine. And the second video also does a very good job of getting a similar shot of that fear and anxiety in her eyes. The only funny thing is that her suit goes from yellow to white. This next video also does a very good job. The prompt is very comprehensive and so Sora is able to follow along very well. As you can see, it's a female DJ with a lot of curly hair. She's smiling slightly as the prompt says, and she also nods her head and sways to the beat. There is a shallow depth of field as well. The color that comes across the screen looks like a hand. Kind of funny, but for all intents and purposes, I think it's done a very good job here. With this one, with the muscle car, there are some very specific details that the video has in it. So things like a low tracking shot, an olive green muscle car, the car drifts, through the corner as well. And there's a lot of tire smoke and there's obviously the city lights and everything along those lines. Sora does a pretty decent job of following along. It got down quite a few of those things that I mentioned. The only thing that obviously is not great is how the car morphs from the angle it drives and how it transforms to make it fit where it needs to go. So there's a little bit of that hallucinating or that morphing, it just can't really do any good movement or directional changes in those movements as well. But otherwise, other than that, it's done a very good job with the prompt. Now, this scene is one of the clips that Google has put up on their website about limitations. And from watching the video here, it feels like they can do the foreground really well because I can't really notice any, any changes or, or anything bad with it, but it's the background that seems to shift or change. And you can see it on the right hand side, there's a mirror and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be there, but it's supposed to, if it is a mirror, it's reflecting the wrong things. And the background in the reflections don't seem to be working very well. When you watch the video of ChatGPTs, it does get the grandiose, the feeling of, you know, Victorian Elizabethan era, the colors are there as well. It's just taken a little different direction in how it wants to present that. I think Sora has done a pretty decent job. There isn't that many mistakes in that. You can see in this other video as well, it's also done a pretty decent job. Um, you're gonna have certain artifacts and errors there, but otherwise I, you can kind of see there's some limitations in how the platforms work. At this point, I'm actually starting to notice there's a pretty good distinctive difference between how both of them work. From how I'm seeing it, it looks like Google's VO2 is very good at focusing on things in the foreground, not so much on the background part. And ChatGBT Sora is actually the opposite around. It's not very good at the things that are in the foreground or your center of attention, but it knows how to create that scene consistency with the background it generates. So this is probably one of the videos that can really show the difference because on the left, you'll notice that for the most part, this ice skater looks like she's skating really well. It, it's kind of a blink or you miss it kind of scenario. If you watch her legs, her legs blend in and then they come back out again. So it's not really crossing over, but you can see that the background looks like a green screen of some sort. So they just put a green screen around her as she skates where it's supposed to be her gliding through smoke. 
and through clouds. Where and you can see it on the ChatGPT side, Sora, her legs go in and out a lot and it's moving all around. But the clouds are there and the background is pretty consistent. So it kind of does look like she's floating through or skating through the clouds. When it comes to animals, it seems like it can do a very good job of generating those shots, especially if they're very slow motion or slow moving. Because you can see here, both videos create a very good flamingo and they have very good water generation as well. I think the videos do perfectly fine for this kind of thing. It's a very slow motion shot. There's not that many complex things to it. So both are able to generate it in quite a good way. Cartoons and animation is a very subjective thing. It depends on what you like and the style of animation that you like. For me personally, I'm obviously going to like the one that Google VO has created. It's just a very more Disney Pixar kind of style of animation that I personally prefer. The one on the right feels like it's a little bit more tailored towards younger kids as well. They both have done a very good job of generating an animated kid. I think they hit their points as well of what they wanted to generate. Smiling girl as well. So. I think it, they've both done a very good job here. In this particular video with the dogs on the flamingo, I think the prompt is very over descriptive. There's a lot of unnecessary words which haven't impacted on the actual creation of the video. The main points that just stand out is you know, a dog sitting on a vibrant pink flamingo float on a swimming pool. And I think Sora has done a very good job of recreating that image that Google VO has created. So I think it's done a very good job here. This cube video is pretty impressive in terms of how both video generation tools work with geometric shapes and object generation as well. I think both videos have followed the prompt fairly well. There's a little bit at the end, which doesn't happen. I mean, how do you reflect infinity, right? But I almost feel like Sora's video generation has actually done a better job with the prompt than Google's one. But you guys can be the judge and tell me. I wanted to do this video as well because I think this is probably shot for shot the best video that Sora created in comparison to what Google's created as well. I think it followed the prompt fairly well. There's the two Peruvian ladies as well with the llama and they're both walking. And I think it's just done a very, very good job. Now here, I decided to try and see if I could find some videos that weren't tailored specifically to what Google created. So I went to X to see if I could find some videos and prompts. Here is what I was able to find. I think this is a very good video that Google VO has created of this pickup truck driving through the road and through waterfalls. But Sora's version is just off the chain. I think it follows the prompt very poorly on this video. I mean, it does get some things right, but then when it gets to the waterfall, that's where all hell breaks loose. I even tried fixing it up through the storyboard functionality by trying to make it more complex and follow the structure a little bit more. But as you can see, there is a yellow pickup truck but then it just flies off a waterfall. So it's, it doesn't entirely follow the prompt per se. I guess this is just how it imagines how it would work. I think this next prompt just shows how good Google is at following simplistic prompts because this one just says a cat looks at a mirror and sees a lion. Sora does a good job as well. There is a, a mirror and there is a cat. It's just a cat with a lion's mane on it. So it's about 50-50 in terms of how it captures the content properly. This prompt here, I think, is where you can see Sora is starting to miss the mark a little bit. On the left, you can see that Google has done a very good job of someone cutting tomatoes. The Sora video does have the action of them trying to cut the tomatoes, but it seems to be trying to cut something else. And then it's just spliced it together. You do get the final cut of a tomato piece falling apart, but it's not exactly what the prompt is asking for. I mean, it has followed the prompt kind of technically. That is a wooden board. It's just not a clean wooden board that humans would normally think of. And it does cut the tomato, just not in a proper way. I think this San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge drone shot is done very well for both sides. This is another instance of where there's a slow shot and Sora is able to create it in a very good way. But both, both models are very impressive on this as well. 
This last video here is probably the best one to show you just how good Google VO is at creating different shots or setting up scenes in a better way. I think it does a very good job of cutting from one to the other. Sora does a pretty decent job, but there's a little bit of splicing that happens. Doesn't make it look like it's amazing, but it does technically follow the prompts here. So what do I think after comparing VO2 and Sora in 15 different scenarios? For what it's worth, I think Sora did very well when it came to following the prompts that Google used for the VO videos. There were some minor inconsistencies, like the yellow hazmat suit turning white and the muscle car inverting within itself to adjust for that movement change. But for the majority of them, it followed the prompts quite well. The limitation videos really shined a light for me at what each video generation tool is good at. Like I mentioned before, VO seems to do quite well when it comes to realism or true to lightness with objects in the foreground, whereas Sora seems to do better with its scene consistency and how it frames its background elements. But heading to X was probably the real test, where the prompts were not as detailed and far more simplistic. Without detailed context, Sora wasn't able to create as realistic videos as VO2, especially when there was significant movement in the videos. The Golden Gate Bridge shot was very good because it was a slow and steady shot. And the cat video gets them halfway. However, the quick movements of the knife and the truck shooting off the waterfalls showed that Sora still has some work to do. I'm sure that Sora and VO2 have kicked off an arms race for video generation. And from my initial impressions, when it comes to creating more realistic videos and with Sora suffering from hallucinating extra limbs or directional movement issues more frequently, VU looks like it has the lead. With image and video generation tools becoming more effective, the question that Nilay Patel from The Verge loves to ask is, what is a photo? And that could very well extend to videos as well. Considering the likes of Disney and Marvel and all the other studios around already relying heavily on CGI for things like their pre-production and post-production, that future might not be that far away where we're now asking, what is a video? Thanks again for tuning in to watch my video. If you like what you saw, then remember to smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss an update. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.